before we get started, let's go through the list of materials that you'll need to complete this project. First up is a 1 quarter inch stainless steel coated cable. Next is a 3 inch swivel pulley. You'll need a couple of thimbles and ferrule stops. You'll also need some sort of loading pin. I happen to be using the Rogue loading pin. And finally, you'll need some sort of crimping tool to securely attach everything. All right, let's get started. Hey, what's up guys? Uh, today I am doing another DIY project and today I'm actually installing um, a lat pulley machine or pulley apparatus. And so I actually kind of, I don't want to say stole this idea, but basically I'm, I'm making a very, very similar product that you can buy online from Rogue. Um, it's called the Spud Pulley System. Uh, but they charge like $100 for it, um, so it's a little bit overpriced in my opinion. But if you have the skills and a couple of tools that are necessary, you can actually create one on your own. Now, I did buy the Rogue um, loading pin because it's really hard to find something very specific like this. And it's like $25. It's a really good deal. It's made from the same heavy-duty uh, iron and metal that the, uh, the Rogue racks are uh, constructed from. So it's, I know it's going to be uh, a durable product. Um, the other things that I got at my local home center store, so you could probably find them at your, you know, Lowe's, Home Depot, I find mine at Menards. Um, but basically what you're going to need is some three, uh, I'm sorry, quarter inch uh, braided cable. And I actually got the um, coated, vinyl coated cable because um, that'll just, that'll um, slide a lot easier, easier in the in the pulley, uh, but then it also prevents or at least minimizes the, the possibility of it fraying along the way. So being that it's coated, it's, it should should last that much longer. Now this is about a six and a half foot piece that I cut from a 20 foot piece. So actually I could make a couple of these if I wanted to. Um, so you need about a six and a half foot piece of cable. Um, then what you're going to need is a couple of these, um, these furring. Um, stops. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to feed one in. We'll go through that in a second. You're going to feed one in of the cable in there and then use one of these um, thimbles to kind of secure it so that you're not constantly pulling on the cable. This kind of gives it a little bit more reinforcement um, when you get it all finally set up. And then lastly, um, the pulley itself. So this actually is a three inch pulley, which is bigger than the one that comes with the spud system from Rogue. Um, this one actually has a capacity of like 650 pounds. Um, I think the one from Rogue or the Spud is about 450 pounds. I think it's a two inch. Um, there are a couple different options that you want to be careful of. So this one happens to be a multi-swivel, which is kind of nice. Um, when I went to the store originally, I got a fixed pulley and I realized that's not what I wanted. So um, make sure that you, if you can, get the swivel one. That way you're not locked into... Um, a specific orientation of the swivel, it's what, of the swivel, swivel itself. Okay, so so to get this all uh, configured, you're going to need one of these these tools right here, and this is basically just a ferrule crimping uh, tool. Now, this one is specifically for the the roughly the size that uh, of ferrules that I have, and so um, you know you'll have to make sure that you get one that's comparable. This one happens to be an 18 inch. 450 millimeters. Um, it was like 20 bucks, and so I probably will never use it again. So that's kind of a sunk cost. Um, you might want to see if you, a friend of yours has one. If you don't want to have to buy one, or you can buy it and return it. I guess that's an option too. All right. So to assemble this, um, we're going to take one end of the cable. And we're going to insert it into the ferrule, and then we're going to loop it around into the other hole that's in here. And you want it to come just so it's passed or flush with that ferrule. And then you're going to pull it through like so. And you want to stop a little ways before you get all the way to the end because you got to put this thimble in here. And then once you get the thimble in place, then continue to pull it tight. Until it's kind of secure in there. 
you might have to use some leverage here like this and kind of really cinch it down in there. So you want to make sure that that thing's not going to come out at any point. So really give it a good, a good pull. Okay. So that's not going to come out of there now. It should be pretty tight. Okay. Then what you would want to do is just again double check to make sure your your wires where it needs to be on there, and then you want to take your your crimping device and. This is where it's a little bit tricky depending on if you got one or uh, two people to help you with this, but you got to be real careful because if you get too much pressure on it right away, you're actually probably going to cut through it. So you want to just start at the end of it, get this thing all the way open, and get it start at the end of it. And there should be like a little groove on this thing that it kind of just fits right into. So. You want to get towards the end of it and put it in that little groove and then just begin to clamp down on it like so. So you can kind of see it made the little indentation right at the end of that. I'm going to turn it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. So that's pretty much secured at the bottom of it now. Probably can't see that, but so I've got a couple lines on the bottom on either side of this. And now I want to do the same thing on the, the other end of it. All right, so that is now pretty much secure in there from both sides of it. Probably hard to see here. But so now I've got lines along the top, lines along the bottom on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and put one along the middle too because I really don't want this thing to come apart. So now I've got this thing in there. It is not coming out, which is obviously what we want. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to repeat the process on the other side. One thing to make sure that you do before you put the other one on, because obviously this will not fit inside of this uh, pulley, is you need to run this line through the pulley before you secure the other end. Um, if you make that mistake, you're going to have to cut this line and start over. So don't make that mistake. All right, so I'm going to do the other side, and then we'll give it a go. Okay, so I've got both of the thimbles and the um, ferrule uh, stops on the, the wire now, and it's gone through my, my pulley. And so um, what I want to do now is I have a couple of carabiners, or carabiners, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but either way, um, to connect this to one end of this and another one to connect it to my to my rack so let's see how that's going to set up all right so here's everything in place um, i've got my attachment connected i've got my loading pin with a, with a light amount of weight on here i've got my pulley attached to my spotter arm across the top here and um you know what I really, really like about this is it kind of, I can take it all apart and, and not have it be the way, but this allows me to do some additional workout or additional exercises um, in my workouts. So one thing you'll notice is I'm using one of my spotter arms across the top. Um, normally you would attach this to some sort of cross member of your rack. I don't happen to have one, um, but if you did, you know, that's where you would attach um, the shackle that I'm using to uh, connect everything to my rack. So in terms of um, kind of a, just a real quick demo of, of how smooth it operates, it actually is, is really, really nice. I mean, normally I was using uh, resistance bands to do kind of an exercise like this. Um, and the nice thing about resistance bands is you can take them with you, but the, the difference in having a pulley like this is so much, you can just see it right, or you can tell it right away. Um, that the action and the, the, the equal amount of weight distribution is is uh, is there with the pulley. So I'm really happy with how this all you know came together. Um, and it was like I think it was like forty five or fifty dollars for 
everything. And that includes um, the, the loading pin. So the pulley is probably going to be the most expensive. Well, actually, I think the well the pulley was more expensive than the than the actual cable. Um, it was like twelve dollars for this this pulley, and then uh, the 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 wire was um, or the cable was only like ten dollars. The, the the loading pin, like I said, was about twenty five dollars. And then all the little stuff here was just pretty much a couple bucks here and there. So I'll actually include a list of all the details in terms of what you need to do something like this yourself in a blog post um, in the description below. All right, so, so there you have it. Uh, this is kind of a homemade version of the Spud pulley system that you can create um, with very little um, effort, um, a few special pieces of equipment, a couple of extra tools that you might need. If you don't have, but you know, for forty-five to let's say sixty dollars, you can have this pulley system, and actually have enough cable left over that I can create a second pulley um, to do a lower one as well, and actually might do that. But you know, I think this is a great addition to any kind of um, home gym that you might have, where you, if you want to do some more um, cable type movements, where you know, if you've, you've been using resistance bands, this is a great alternative. And uh, so I'm glad I did this. And like I said, for the cost, it was a no-brainer for me because I had the weights already. I just needed the loading pin and a couple of the, the small accessories that, that I was able to get at my local um, home center stores. And um, so there you have it. Uh, let me know what you think of this, this, this DIY project. And let me know if you've created it yourself and shoot me some pictures or if you have questions. Uh, again, check the, uh, check the description below and I'll include a link to the blog post where I'm going to full, full write-up of how you can go about creating this exact same setup yourself. All right, see you guys.